So today we're going to learn about terrorism and non-state actors. We have three daily objectives. Number one, define terrorism and non-state actors. Number two, explain why terrorists engage in terrorism. And number three, explain why terrorism is an effective tactic. First, let's review. For Christmas, we learned that we learned about the post-Cold War order. So using the International Monetary Fund, the World Trade Organization, and the United Nations, the United States of America is able to effectively manage world affairs. We looked at military spending. We see that US, the United States spends more money than pretty much all of the next 19 countries combined. On top of the fact that many of those countries are in fact US client states, uh, when we looked at our hierarchy over on the right, the USA being the king at the top. We also learned about a guy named Francis Fukuyama, and what Francis Fukuyama predicted was that two things would challenge the post-Cold War USA-dominated world order. Those are religious fundamentalism, as we can see over here on the right, an example being ISIS, and resurgent nationalism. So if we look over on the bottom, an example being Russia and their president, Vladimir Putin. Yesterday, we talked about the war on terror, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and we went over some of the outcomes of that war. So both Iraq and Afghanistan are widely considered to be failures. Much like Vietnam, they were tactical victories, but strategic, or they were tactical victories, but strategic failures. And the reason why is because we were successful in overthrowing Osama bin Laden, or killing Osama bin Laden and overthrowing Saddam Hussein but we failed to establish peaceful countries with pro-U.S. government in either country. Terrorism, furthermore, continues to plague the developed world, especially in France and Germany, both of which are client states of the USA. So the war on terror actually made terrorism worse. Plus, because of the fall of dictators in the Middle East, religious fundamentalist groups like ISIS have taken over much of the region. In fact, this is exactly what has happened in Iraq and Syria under ISIS. So without someone controlling the region, the region being the Middle East, whether it is brutal dictators like Saddam Hussein and Bashar al-Assad, whether it is the United States after we, after we overthrew Saddam Hussein, whether it is Iran, whether it is the Russians, terrorists are going to. Someone's got to be in control. Someone's got to be the boss. And if somebody doesn't step up and do it, it's going to be the terrorists. Over here on the picture on the right, we see ISIS in the back of uh, Toyota, Toyota Hiluxes. So let's talk about terrorism. What is terrorism? According to Merriam-Webster, terrorism is the use of violence and intimidation in the pursuit of political aims. Don't really like this definition. And the reason I don't like this definition is because is because it, it has a very, very wide brush. Pretty much anything done by a state is done for political reasons. Therefore, any violence used by a state, according to this definition, would be terrorism. So we look over here on the top right picture. This is a picture of ISIS recruits. We know in our heads that those are terrorists. But according to the definition, the use of violence and intimidation in the pursuit of political aims, we look at the bottom right picture. That is a picture of the airplane, the Enola Gay, which was the airplane that dropped the atomic bombs on Hiroshima. Technically, that is the United States of America using violence, the dropping of the atomic bombs, for political aims, attempting to get Japan to surrender. But is that terrorism? It's a good question. Another definition, the deliberate military targeting of civilians. So again, ISIS, clearly that's terrorists, that, that, that jives with that definition. But again, Enola Gay is dropping the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II. Is that terrorism? Most of you are probably thinking, no, that's during war. That's different. But according to this definition, that is in fact terrorism. Final definition, the use of violence as a means of achieving a goal. We look at the bottom left picture, police. Police use violence all the time to achieve goals. Their main goal being bring peace and order to our country. Is that terrorism? Probably not. So as we can see, terrorism is not so easily definable. 
So the definition we're going to go with, because it's probably the best definition available to us, is a person who uses terrorism in the pursuit of political aims. The problem is all of these people we see on the picture have used have 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 used violence, but not necessarily terrorism. So if we think of terrorism as targeting civilians specifically, Osama bin Laden clearly, clearly meets that definition. There on 9-11, he clearly used his guys, hijacked airplanes, and attacked both civilian and military targets in the United States. That is clearly, he's clearly a terrorist. He used terrorism in pursuit of political aims. On the bottom, on the bottom, we have the President of the United States who dropped the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now, did he use violence in the pursuit of political aims? Yes. Did he use terrorism in the pursuit of political aims? That's a debate. It's a debate we discussed a few days ago, in fact. Bottom left, we have a, a picture of President Barack Obama. Did he use terrorism in the pursuit of political aims? Probably not. Did he use violence? Yes. Drone strikes, soldiers on the ground, he's used it all. In fact, him using Navy SEALs is what ended up killing Osama bin Laden. But did he use terrorism? Did he specifically try to terrorize people? No, he did not. So this definition isn't, isn't all bad. But it ain't great either. Here are pictures from Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So bottom left picture is Hiroshima after the bomb drop. You can see there's very little left standing. Picture on the right is actually still exists. Um, this little girl who was uh, jumping rope uh, was burned onto the brick of that building. She was she was atomized by the atomic bomb. So she is permanently marked on that building that still stands in Hiroshima, her shadow. So we're going to add a definition. And I think this definition really clarifies things. What is a terrorist? It is a non-state actor that engages in terrorism in the pursuit of political aims. So the United States of America would not be, would not be terrorists under this definition during World War II when we dropped the bomb at Hiroshima and Nagasaki because we are state actors. We are not non-state actors. A non-state actor would be like ISIS or Al-Qaeda or Hezbollah or Hamas, all of the different terrorist groups we talk about when we think about terrorism. So what's a non-state actor? It is an individual or organization that has significant political influence but is not allied to any particular country or state. In other words, a non-state actor is a person that does not work for a government, is not part of a government, and to be a terrorist would be a non-state actor that then engages in terrorism in the pursuit of political aims. So I think this is probably the best definition we're going to get, the one in red. What is terrorist? What is a terrorist? What is a terror? What is terrorism? When a, it is a non-state actor that engages in terrorism in the pursuit of political aims. So why engage in terrorism? That's really the big question of today. Now we're going to learn why individuals engage in terrorism in the reading that follows the, this video. But let's talk about why terrorist groups engage in terrorism. And generally speaking, terrorist groups engage in terrorism because it works. If it didn't work, they wouldn't do it. If they weren't getting what they wanted out of using terrorism, out of being terrorists, they wouldn't do it. So let's talk specifically about some of the reasons why non-state actors engage in terrorism. So number one, terrorism delegitimizes a country. In other words, it serves to create a level of uncertainty about a government's power. So if a terrorist successfully pulls off a terrorist attack, like destroying the Twin Towers, then that tells the rest of the world that that government cannot protect its own country. So let's put that in context. After Al-Qaeda destroyed the World Trade Centers on 9-11, after they hit the Pentagon on 9-11, what that demonstrated to the rest of the world is that we, the United States of America, were not untouchable. We could bleed like anyone else. We could be hurt. That made us look bad. It delegitimized our country. It created uncertainty about our government's power. So it weakened us. 
9-11 weakened our country. Second, why do terrorist groups engage in terrorism? Because who wants to mess with a crazy person? Who wants to mess with a crazy person? Let me give you an example. Some guy comes to school and steals your lunch money every day. He's bigger than you are. He's uglier than you are. He's scarier looking than you are. Comes to school every day, punches you in the face, takes your lunch money. Okay. You get tired of it. 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 One day, you decide, you know what? I'm done with this. You bring a bat to school, and when he goes to punch you in the face, you hit him in the back of the head with a baseball bat. Now, do you get suspended? Yes. But when you come back, do you think anyone is going to mess with you? Probably not, because they know that you're willing to take out a baseball bat and hit them in the back of the head. This person is borderline crazy. Are you going to mess with a crazy person? Is anybody going to mess with a crazy person? The answer is no. And this is what terrorists are doing. When we think of terrorists, we think, oh, well, they're crazy. Does anybody want to mess with a crazy person? No, they don't, because they're afraid they're going to hit, get hit with a baseball bat by the crazy person. This is what terrorists are doing. They're using random acts of violence to get what they want. And it works, because no country in the world wants to have a suicide bomber in their capital, in their capital city. What can we do to stop terrorism? We're going to watch this video after we finish this video. Take about five minutes, answer your daily objectives.